We drank this coffee throughout the year, every day. Oh yes, a cup of morning coffee. This is from a coffee machine that belonged to a dead lady. Well, I'm not going to say that learned phrase. I'm Alena Kupčikova, I'm an artist and I'm dyslexic. Czech television presents. This is the photo I took, a picture of that relief. What I can read from that. Of course, the music goes on in time. It goes this way on. Here's a zero point. Here are pitches. And here are, here are incurred errors. Some defects happening here. I can read this as well, what's going on between it, or this piece of paper. It's an old by itself, this defect. This and all these. That's actually a score which was created as a natural reaction to people walking this place. Cars going and underneath you can hear the train, probably with some vibrations. Music is read from left to right, but I have been occupied for a long time with the thought, why couldn't it be invert? Documentary by Jaroslav Czerny. This is a sketch, a sketch of an asphalt score. It looks like asphalt, a road, an African road. I did this colorful on purpose. In fact, it's a road from Prague in the direction to Moravia, somewhere around Jamberg or so, and this this is a transcript of the picture. In the rhythm of Alena Kupčíková. Here's the fruit. Now I don't know whether I shouldn't... It's all right. CD. Fine, and here we are. CD written, and it's done. I'm dyslectic, and that's why the idea of a primer for dyslectic children came into my mind five years ago. Then I started going to kindergartens and studying how children perceive the letters according to shape, color and sound, because I suppose that the children would perceive letters similarly as I had done when I had attended first class. At that time, it came to my mind that the primer is not the first for that business and something should precede it. When I studied all possible materials concerning dyslexia, specialized literature, I got the idea to create tests which would reveal initial problems with writing and reading before entering elementary school. Actually, this is related to it. It interested me a lot. I thought, well, there is finally some writing. I asked the children what they saw in letters. This is a good example of a boy. It was in the year 2005, he was born 98, so he was approximately six years old. And from this one, you can see that he's going to have a problem. He's not able to imitate anything using the toy cubes. Above all, this is my childhood, antlers and such stuff. My father and the whole family were ardent hunters. My father doesn't live any longer, but the antlers remained here. This used to be my and my brother's bedroom. When I was four, I used to climb this tree. I had older brothers and they climbed this tree as well. Could you please hold me? I put my leg over here. You're not holding me at all. Fine. Well, I always followed my brothers climbing the tree. I have two brothers and I always wanted to imitate them. I was three years younger than Jarek and eight years younger than Kaya. So I always wanted to catch up with them. But I was younger, so I couldn't do many things. My brother used to spit at me and to throw stones at me from the top so that I wouldn't climb up to them. I solved it by putting a helmet on my head. Well, now I can see all around. I see the quarry. Unfortunately, my father died there. I see our land estate there. Here I see the shop. I see the whole area.
tady oblast. She was a strange child in the kindergarten. She used to play with her hands like this. I was looking at them. They told me it was an escape from something she didn't like. It's like hyperactivity. She's lively. She's not interested in it, so she plays with her hands. They sent me two times to... You saw the psychiatrist in Schumberg two times. He said that there was no need to worry. She was all right. Is anything inside? Yes. This is my brother. I want to put the rest inside. Did you pick everything? No, this is not all yet. I wanted to pick everything. Alena was good at many things. She attended a young firefighters group, learned playing guitar, attended a hunters group. You were doing exercise, ping pong, volleyball. And since the age of four, I have been swimming. When she was 14, she left home. She was coming back once a week only. Then she was in Bechine, so she was away for two weeks. Then she attended secondary school in Prague and later university. At that time, she was returning home rarely. And now I see her twice a year only. Well... Look, you have a B. AC in Czech language in the first class, and then later, second class the same. Our family only, it's my mother, me, my brother who's not here anymore, my other brother, our niece. Consider it being one family, a five-member family. Well, my father isn't any longer as well, so four of us were dyslectic, that's a high rate. I could enroll at the academy without having to take my A-levels. I'll never forget when I was approximately 17 and I was attending Hola's graphic school here in Prague. We had a dictation in Czech language. There was a phrase with who, what, and I stopped at the word who, and I wrote literally H-O. I didn't finish the dictation at all. My Czech language teacher at that time told me she wouldn't let me take the final exam. Fortunately, I was admitted to the Academy of Fine Arts in the meantime, so I thank my professor that he spared me from it. Maybe I wouldn't have passed the final exam in Czech language, because my composition might have been marked AF. Here are some drawings. They might be from the time before I attended the Academy. Here I was in Azul. This was an exam script, probably at secondary school. It wasn't easy with me. I attended quite many secondary schools and I didn't finish any of them. Today I'm working on my doctorate. It's quite fun. I brought this to Aleš Veselý, my professor, to show him what I'm doing. At that time, I showed him some sketches and especially pictures because I thought I was a monumental painter. And he told me, he saw there that I had some installations, if I was making some statues or something like that. And I said, sure. Till these days, I'm apologizing to him because I was lying. I had created these various terrible sketches within only a few days. The most important was the story connected to it. And what it was. No, what I painted, but what I wanted to express in it. Alena was probably my favorite student, because we are the person you communicate with on the basis that one is a teacher and the other one a student. It doesn't matter, though they are two subjects. The one wants to learn, and the other one is trying to guide him. That communication was great. I told off our professor for marking us with bees. It was in the third or fourth year. It was crazy you came with such a disillusionment of life. You gave me a B, you never prized me. And I said, I do constantly write how good you are. For Alena, my favorite and probably my best student. This is the menu with toadstools. And there are more tasks under each mushroom. Do you know, when I was looking at it this way, I thought there were strawberries. Okay, let it be strawberries. Well, I see it now. You know, if I hadn't made it this way, I wouldn't have been able to realize what a four-year-old child should know and what the dyslexic has or hasn't by itself. I wouldn't have been able to make a good primer.
I remember this was in 97. I should have even carried it out in my hometown in Schumberg, where I was born. The project works like this. It's actually a road. There are some specific places designated on it. There is, for example, here I have some hemispheres, grass, stairs, water, rubber statues, stones, anything, various materials. And you're, as you're walking on it, you change the rhythm of your walking. Actually, I'm still working with sound or rhythm. The primer is about the rhythm of language too. These are ideas, and it's actually very close to my professor Aleš Veseli, who creates artworks of utopia. He creates huge statues which evolve on paper first, and then he makes them. And that's the reason why I wanted to learn from him, or probably he chose me, for I have the utopia within myself. This is a project for the entry examination for the academy. It's actually a life record. You enter it and there are various holes and it's as if you're throwing a dice. I invented ladders and climbing frames, so one would have to overcome them. Here's number 227, which was my number for the talent exams. It's an installation where there are a lot of flies and various gnats, and when you get up in the morning, they annoy you, and it's terrible. So I thought up that you get into it, enter it, and see the flies like under small glasses, and they can't get to you, though, as a simulation, you're hearing the buzzing. I look up tunnel in a tunnel. This is what I wrote. When I hate flies, I climb the stairs, that's actually inside, to the second small tunnel towards the small grasses. I see only a small point in the distance, the silence, wonderful. This probably, this probably isn't the first one. It may be this one. Where I was trying, I played with it. I pasted the pubic hair on this place only. And later I started making the whole figure and outlines from it. And here I show you one of the first hairy women as well. It's in a frame. For it's not laminated at all. And here I even use the powder which women use for makeup. Here you can still see glue that might have been in 2001. Later I realized that I can't give people pictures which are under glass, as the hair would pour out. So I put plastic film on it, and if you iron it, the hair can't fall down. Today I think that they censored me in Paris because of this woman. The whole picture is made from pubic hair. Everything is on handmade paper, of course. It's a prize they award to three foreigners around the world and to three French. In that particular year, I was awarded, actually, Czech Republic, Switzerland, and a Croatian got the prize. The wife of the French president, it was Chirac at the time. Mrs. Chirac should have given me the prize. And when they realized for what I was awarded the prize, they hadn't known until then, she was a means only, they stopped it for everybody. It's a cock-up, why should they have done that? It's an absolute drudgery. In 2003, I guess, when the first exhibition was held, at that time people were looking at it, what it was. At that time, it was even difficult to get some pubic hair, so I credibly shaved my family and friends. And today I have a lot of material from different parts of the world. This I have from the Republic of South Africa. People use various wrappings. Here I got a wonderful letter from South Africa. Good luck. These are genuinely read. This is one of the last letters. It's, it's from Brooklyn. 
Some women said that they wanted to be removed from the video recording I had created as a documentary picture. When the participant is looking at these erotic drawings, an illusion that you are thinking about which of these women is on a particular picture. I simply wanted to create a dream of that illusion, and it works quite well. For example, at the opening, men were asking whether any of the women were there, and they were wondering which woman was which picture. This was in Rome. These two came back sometime in February. These are in the National Gallery. I illustrated a book using hair-made figures, you know, that I made those hairy women. It's made from hair, hair of men, women, though I put some animals in too. You brought it to such perfection. Such perfection. Mm. You use her to draw pictures like this. We will try other paper because one can see the print here. I thought when you browsed it this fast that it was on some parchment, well, on transparent one. It looks like that. It probably doesn't matter that the print is visible. No, it doesn't matter at all. It looks beautiful. It's fine. Sure, I grew up here, so I like nature, and nature is part of my thinking and of what is called fine art. When I began to toy with the idea that a forest should be planted, or I should choose an area with various kind of trees, because they sound differently, an idea crossed my mind that I had to examine a single tree first. My idea was to take a picture of the tree, then enlarge it and make a sort of handmade grid and calculate it. If I calculated the corresponding dimensions, I would get a lot of numbers. The numbers are first, second, third, fourth. I calculate it from all directions. It's changing. It's not a regular circle. And now it's transformed into a staff. And here they are drums and piano. For example, here is 0 0.36 and here is 0 0.65, and these are chords already. If you look at it, these are chords already. Here, two of them would play, two trees, and later they would get together. Here is a huge composition. These are CDs, and actually it resembles a phonograph record or a CD, though it wasn't the reason why I wanted to create it, even if it's misleading, because it occurs to everybody. Here we actually have a big library of compositions, which we can listen to. When we imagine in our heads or when we create a system at home as I did. <laughs> For example, this. It's a nice score too. That spot. Look, it's a third. This. What is here? To read it. Put it into a staff. Either do this the primitive way and the line can be read, or we can calculate it. Using, for example, capacity, calculate the whole spot. Again, it would be a nice relief, a nice, large, long relief with all these details. For instance, this is rubber. I don't understand why it's here. It's interesting as well. And this is amazing to me too. Those, how you call them? Sewers. <laughs> Sewers. These are asphalt scores from various roads. This is in Moravia, somewhere. This too. Okay. 
And this is Prague 7. This is H, W, and this is A, and this is O. Well, now, Natalka, you see many things here. Try to choose something from all these, from the heap, to imitate the letters here, to compose them. Let's try the first one, H. Will you try to make it? From anything you want. We have plasticine here too, if you want, or you can use the small cubes. This is why I started making the primer, because as a child I saw other things in letters. To me, the letter H was only a square. Because of this, I was kept after school, as I wasn't able to read a particular thing in the primer, and I had to copy it maybe 100 times. I recall this moment very strongly and very often, and it was the hinge why I started making the primer. Which from these things can be the letter O, this round one? I try here, here's an O. These are three O's. We are still short of one O. One more O. Oh, here! Well, this is an O too. When I was working with them, I realized that a dog might be, for example, a D, as his body looks as a D, or that a child's bridge looks like an E, turned upside down, or that threes are Ys and Xs, or that they are Vs. We are not saying that this is a tree and it means a T. Here you can see an example from a girl, she's a bit older already. You can see that the letters really might be it that it would help her. She sees them the same way as me. She sees, for example, figures in those letters, shapes. I would really like to use the different perception for in the primer and use just the shape. And provided that the important thing for a dyslexic child is not the sound but the shape, then I think this might be a way. I needed an alley that would communicate with them somehow. I was thinking about what it should be. All of us are accustomed to the mall or other various figures. The children needed the figure. There's a mouse in my tests, so I wanted to pick a hedgehog for the primer. A hedgehog that travels around the world. And the main principle of the primer is that the hedgehog has a girlfriend and they are cycling around the world on a tandem and see the letters. For example, here they are cycling, they are leaving their home and now they see, for example, the letter A, an automobile. It's a coincidence that an A here is an automobile. And after the hedgehogs had traveled through a part of the world and after having collected many experiences, they had to go back home to Prague. Here you can clearly see the letters. The Charles Bridge, or all the bridges, are made from C's, but the Charles Bridge is composed of several E's. Buildings. Here we have a D. We can see the National Theatre over there. It looks like the letter D. And the roofs here, they might be E's, but the windows, they might be these as well. Prague is probably full of D's and E's. Amol is looking for something to eat, but it's dark under the earth. Draw the way it's climbing. Now, we are drawing from where, from where the mole has started. Try it. No. From where? Where has he started? Try. This is a test that lets us identify that a four-year-old child will have problems with writing and reading. Moreover, we teach the child how to overcome the problem. If there's prevention even for small children, it's great. Later in the first class, the child is not shocked when it experiences first problems and feels that it differs from the other children. You have to click properly, this way. A dyslectic child or a four-year-old child might use the mouse, the look for the sound that corresponds to that, what the pair is saying here on the top. I think that this work is very difficult and it's not possible to really complete it. That's very helpful. 
I will certainly finish it this year. I think that you will not finish the work. You will complete it in a certain form which the Commission may accept. Mm. I think that, in fact, this task can't be completed. Sure, it's a process, a long process. I'll have to finish it and then I will move on. Maybe in 10, 15 years I will discover a simple but not trivial one and there will be everything that should be there. But it's not possible to do it within two, three years, within five years. It's difficult. The dyslexia might develop elsewhere. The dyslexia might develop. Theme and script Jaroslav Czerny, dramaturgy Marek Šebeš, translation Jana Hermanska, dubbing Petr Robietin, Sandra Trantová, archive materials Czech Television, cooperated Martin Buk, Jan Makaloš, Petr Maršík, soundtrack direction Václav Vaněček, music Alena Kupčíková, Jan Urban, editing Krasmíra Veličková, kamera Bořivoj Minazík, Matouš Kohout, head of production Vojtěch Pelák, Dramaturgy supervisor Daria Macáková, production supervisor Petr Morávek, director Jaroslav Černý, produced by Centrum Publicistiky a Dokumentu, Czech Television, copyright 2010.